the plot thickens, so to say. I've gotten a request to explain a tool I used in one of my previous videos to select significant factors from historical data. Let's get started. In my previous video, I explained how a DOE was used to save this process. In that video, I said that seven factors was chosen, but I didn't tell you how. All I said was that smart people sat down and selected them, but that's not the entire story. So let's look at the data they had for the historical version of this story. So the story goes that this process was made in the R&D department. The R&D department ran three batches and said that everything is fine, but and sent it off to production. Production has now been running for a longer time. And we can see, let's how, how many. So 18 batches. And now they're saying like, this is unacceptable. We cannot deal with the times this mill is giving us do something. So it was shipped back to R&D. I know this never happens out there in real life. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's look at a control chart. Because you see here, R&D was happy. Okay, they're not at target, but at least they're close to target. Um, this process then hit, you see around like seven hours and the target is I think five hours. Um, this then hits production and we're running at something that looks more like 10 hours and, and 10 hours process time is is, uh, is just too far away from target to this to be a viable process. Um, so they sat down, decided to do a decided experiment and they said, well, I want to do a decided experiment on all my 13 X's. The nice people in management say, no, it's not going to happen. That's too much. That's too time consuming. You get to choose seven. I'm like, but how do I choose seven? Well, someone said, I have a machine learning algorithm that we can use to do that. And it's called predictor screening. And it's an awesome tool. So what it does is that it ranks from good to worst how something, how all of our factors, how good they are at predicting our output. So in this case, my output is time to 200 nanometer. And these are my 13 X's. So what they did is they look, okay, let's do these seven. And that is the story. But the question was, how does this work? Like, how do how can I trust this? What is this? So this is a based on a bootstrap forest, like machine learning thing. And it's actually pretty simple to understand what it does behind the scenes here. So let me try and show you that. So what do we need to do to have a forest? Well, we need trees. So we're going to be making a lot of decision trees to get a forest. So the decision tree will look something like this. So it's called partitioning and jump. And you can see here that I have all my rows on here and the medium time, which we said was nine something. What I'm interested in, I want to know which of my factors can give me like a high time and a low time. So I hit split and jump divides this data set which where it can make the big, biggest difference in mean values. So, and it's saying, well, that's the amount of bees you have. So is that also the number one predictor? Hey, something is, something is checks out here. Um, so it's saying, well, if you're running with lower than 64 beats, you have a mean of, uh, of 10. And if you have the other one, it's eight. We can then say, well, we want a low time. So let's go ahead and split at the low mean. Split here. So, OK, well, if you run at this setting with higher than 64 and you have less mill rounds per minute from than 1,200, you have a mean of 7.5. So it just keeps splitting the data in these kind of subsets and figuring out what settings do I need to use to obtain the lowest possible time to 200 nanometer? Now imagine doing a thousand of these trees automatically, piling them all together and ranking them on how often a factor is chosen to be the splitting par parameter. Then you get what I have in the predictor screening. Make sure to check out the DOE version that's where R&D and production lives happily ever after. 
It's a pure fairy tale. So, thanks again for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want more content like this. Catch you in the next one. Thanks. Going through the video again, I realized I actually don't show you how to do any of this stuff. So, I'm just going to add that as a postscript. Uh, let me know if you like this way of making the video where I just, in the end, share all the uh, the clicks so I don't have to show them in the story. But let's start with the control chart. So you go to Analyze, Quality and Process, Control Chart Builder. And you take your Y minus time to 200 nanometer. And I drag that into the Y. Now, I actually don't like numbers, so, so I want to remove this one. Um, so I go to the red triangle, say, don't show limit summaries, bang, it's gone. Um, now, moving range is awesome, but it's not helpful right now. So I want to remove that as well. So I right click and I say remove moving range. And I want this divided into when this was in R&D and when this was in production. So I take the time I drag that up to face. And I see I have one face for the supervised part and one part for the production part. Last thing I did was right click and say limits and then shade zones. And that's just because it looks cool. Like that, yeah. And also it's it's one and two and three standard deviations of the data. So it's also helpful, but it also just looks cool. Okay, that's the control chart. Let's do the next one. The next two ones are dead simple. And I, I mean this. So you go to analyze, predict your modeling, Partitioning, you say, what are we trying to explain again? Well, it, it's time to do a nanometer. So what do you have available? Well, I have 13 factors. You just put everything in there. You press OK. And then you're there. And I showed you how this works. The last thing, that uh, the predictor screening, you go to screening, predictor screening, and it works exactly the same. Say, so what are you trying to explain? I'm just trying to explain time to do a nanometer. What do you have available? Well, I have all these 13 factors available. And you press OK and you get the ranking. All right. Now, thanks for watching.